on the line. We have UFC 173's Tony Ferguson joining us. Tony Ferguson will be fighting here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand on the Fox Sports 1 preliminary card that leads in to UFC 173. He'll be fighting Katsunori Kikuno, a former deep champion from Japan. Tony, how are you doing today? Doing amazing, guys. Thank you for having me on this bright early day. Hey, no, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. El Kakui, I was explaining earlier on the show, means the boogeyman. And I've been reading a lot uh, of your tweets, and you're saying 2014 is the year of El Kakui. Tell us, uh, what, Tony, have you been doing to come back strong and take on your next opponent here in Katsunori Kikuno? Well, not too many people got to see exactly what I've been working on in my last fight. You know, it was kind of short. It was about two minutes long with Mike Rio. You know, we went in there. People thought I was going to go out there and knock him out, but we ended up submitting the guy. And, uh, you know, that was a strategy that I had about three months before then. I should have wrote on a piece of paper and handed it to Joe Rogan, you know, and been like, hey, this is how I'm going to finish my opponent. He would have flipped out. You know, maybe for Kakuna, maybe we'll do that. But this time what we're doing is we're really confident going into this fight. You know, his stand-up game is really excellent, you know, and he's got a really good liver kick. But if that's all he has, he's going to have his hands full this fight. You know, I'm bringing, you know, guns are blazing and everything's in the haze in the barn, and I'm just ready to go. You know, I have one more week, and, you know, I can't wait to get out there. Man, that sounds awesome. I mean, you came back in that Mike Rio fight from being out for over a year due to injury. Uh, and, you know, that happened at UFC 166. That was back in October. So you've had kind of a, a little, another, I guess, maybe not anything booked since then. Uh, was there any particular reason why you just couldn't find an opponent? Or was it just, it, did you have any lingering effects from your injury after that fight? Well, I ended up taking out a plate out of my arm. I just, uh, you know, me and the doctor, we decided to take it out, and what I had to do is I had to heal it. You know, I had to take some time off to heal it, and, you know, it was the same kind of thing, but hopefully we don't come out with any injuries this fight. Uh, you know, just go in there, like I said, guns are blazing, you know. I, I don't like these breaks. You know, when I won the Ultimate Fighter, I fought six times that year. Yeah. You know, I fought three times in the house, once with Ramsey. Uh, who else was there? There's Aaron Riley and then Eve Edwards. You know, it was like six times in that year, and then I fought Michael Johnson, broke my arm, and there was a big, huge layoff. Right. Yeah, I, I hate not working. You know what I mean? If I'm not working, then I'm not happy. You know, if I'm not training, I'm not happy. You know, that's that's why I say this is the year of the El Kukui because this is my time. You know, everybody thinks I'm a sleeping giant. You know, I, I saw one comment, you know, on a thing. They're like, El Kukui, who? I was like, what? What? No way. I was like, you know, I'm going to have to remind you guys exactly why I belong in this division and why they made me drop from welterweight to lightweight because they know I'm a contender. I should be a top 10 contender, and I'm going to prove it this weekend when I fight Kuno. You know, he's going down. I'm not going to tell you exactly how he's going down, but it's going to be a hell of a performance, and you guys are going to make clapping at the end of it. Well, I remember your tough run, the tough 13 run. You were one of very few people on the Ultimate Fighter to finish every single one of your opponents, and you did it all the way up to the finale, and you did them all by way of knockout. I think that was pretty amazing. And if people missed seeing you then then, yeah, they probably don't know what you're capable of. Uh, tell us right now, Tony, where are you training? Because I know you've um, done a little training with Rain and also Costa Mesa Training Center, right? Yeah, I'm all over the place right now. You know, I, I just When I have an opponent, what I like to do is I look at my opponent, I watch the film, and I have to decide what I'm going to do for my camp. You know, I, I've been doing this for a while now, and you know, I've been competing since I was around like four or five years old as far as wrestling, and just you know, I have this pretty good idea of exactly what I have to do. You know, I've been going to Rain Training Center, Costa Mesa Training Center. I've been messing with my buddy Tyler Wombles. He's a, a W, what is he, a, I forget. He's a state of California state champ in Muay Thai. Dude's legit. You know, he trains over at uh, Babalu Sabra's gym, and he comes over there, gives me his time and energy. Uh, he just trained uh, Raymond Daniels, who just coming off of that glory knockout. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Raymond Daniels is one of my sparring partners, too. And, you know, and, and Kakuno is one of those karate guys. And so, you know, Raymond brought in a couple other these these Taekwondo guys, and they're giving me some pointers, you know, hitting these angles. They're like, hey, this is what you got to do. And I'm paying attention, you know, and I'm taking these notes, and I'm making sure I'm going back to the drawing board and, you know, back to my old coaches, and I'm making sure that we're all entwined and we have the exact same idea. You know, we're going to come out there, give a great performance, and hopefully come out with a performance of the night bonus. That's the idea. Wow, you, you sound pumped. You sound excited. I, I'm excited listening to you right now. I can't wait for the next Saturday night. I, I, this is going to be fun. But your opponent, Kakuno, man, he, he's a tough dude. You watched any tape on him? Are you the type of guy that does that? You know, he's a tough guy, but you know, all I've seen is he's fought overseas. He's fought one dude, Eddie Alvarez, and he put him out in the triangle. You know what I mean? And my submission game has stepped up 
tons. You know, I'm over at 10 Planet Jiu-Jitsu Costa Mesa and 10 Planet LA with uh, Eddie Bravo, and you know, it's it, it's amazing how my game has stepped up so far. You know, my my uh, my manager Ayatai, he calls me from Paradigm Management. He's like, "You're blue chips, Tony." He's like, "You're either that one number one draft pick that's coming off the line." He's like, "We just want to make sure you keep going." And that's exactly what I'm doing. This Kakuno guy, you know, everybody's scared of his stand-up game, but I'm not scared of his stand-up game. I've, I've faced some pretty good stand-up guys myself, you know, like Eve Edwards and Michael Johnson. Yeah. I don't think this guy's going to move as fast as any of those guys, you know. If he's just sitting target, you know, he's just waiting to happen. Oh, that, that's awesome. I can't wait for the fight, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, what's been the transition? I know you used to train, uh, you're from Minnesota, right? What was that? You used to train up in Minnesota with Brock's team, right, with Death Clutch? Yes, yes, yes. I was uh, one of the only real guys that were at Death Clutch, you know, a bunch of dinosaurs over there. You had, like, Brock, you had Pat Berry, you had Cole Conrad, Ryan Tusher. I mean, those are just a few names just to go out there. But the camp was amazing. It was right next to, like, the University of Minnesota, so they were pulling in wrestlers from Minnesota, you know, to help me prepare for Ramsey. You know, my old coach, Marty Morgan, was excellent, taught me the values of, like, you know, like, not overtraining and, and training right. You know, and I I have every little every every coach that I ever had and that, that had good coaching. I jotted down in the notebook, or I put it in the back of my head in my memory warehouse. You know, and that's amazing what I've what I've been able to do is take from that crush and apply it to my game today. Yeah, I'm I'm telling you, I'm excited to see the way your game has developed. I mean, you had that great wrestling background. Now you're training with these Muay Thai guys. You've got the knockout power. You're just becoming the absolute complete package. That's what I'm hoping for. You know, I train every single day, and I throw salt in my game every single day. And if you know me, I'm one of those dudes that, you know, I, I strive for perfection, but I never reach that. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to keep trying until I'm, until I'm old and dead. That's it. Uh, Tony, something I was interested in asking you about was I remember um, speaking to you at UFC 135 after your fight, and you told me that in those fights you carry around a memory box. Like, well, not in the <laughs> fight, obviously, but that you always have it with you. Tell the yep. fans what the significance is of that memory box and, and why you have it at each fight. Uh, it's just something my mom gave me a long time ago just to kind of keep with me. It's just a namesake, you know, and it's cool. It's got my name on it. It's got a little dream box on it, and it's just like one of those things that, you know, I like to do. I'll put, like, a, whatever I'm thinking or whatever I'm feeling for this fight, and I'll put it in there, you know, and, and, it, and it comes from the heart. And, you know, it's just one of those things where it's just, you know, it's just like a luck charm. You know, and, and I always have it with me. And yesterday, it was so funny that you actually mentioned it. I actually found it yesterday because I lose it once in a while. Uh -oh. But it always, comes, it always comes back to me. It's funny. And, you know, I always find it, or, you know, and, and it's, it's funny. It just happens like that. I opened it up, and I actually and I looked at it because the last time I wrote in it, it actually happened. It was almost like how I told you I was going to, like, how I should have wrote, how I was going to finish my career and give it to Joe Rogan. There, you know what I mean? There you go. Well, you know, one thing I'm interested in knowing, too, before we let you go here, because we do have to step away to a break, is the UFC recently announced that they're heading to Mexico. And you being a Mexican descent, how much would it mean for you to be a part of that card? Oh, dude, it would be, I call you dude right now, my bad. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I do it all the time, I man. Yeah. I, I am stoked. You know, I just visited here at Puerto Mexico, and I did a seminar out there at Brothers MMA with uh, Victor Davila, one of the, the interviewers for UFC Espanol. And, you know, what? I, I love it. I, I, want, I want to go back, you know, and if it's going to be out there, I would love to fight out there. You know, if they want to have me as one of the coaches on a team, that'd be awesome even too. You know what I mean? I, I just, I would love to be a part of it. I am Mexican. I'm proud and I love to show myself like that. Wow. That, that just shows how proud you are because most guys that have run through the ultimate fighter house, whether it be a, to come back as a coach or a participant in another way, most say no right away, but you're ready to hop right back on that train and get in there. You know what it is? Is because I had a good learning experience, you know, and I could share something with those athletes that are going in there, you know, being able to be like, hey, man, don't do the things that I did, you know, and do the things that I did, you know, and, and you know what? The one biggest thing is, is I learned so much in that house. I learned so much in that house, and I made sure I brought it right back with me. And like I said, is like even before Death Clutch, I had those coaches even before I went to Death Clutch. So I used every single one of those values that they taught me into my tra training practices and how I use them there and how I go out there and fight. Well, Tony, we are certainly looking forward to seeing you fight UFC 173, May 24th. That's next Saturday. Tony's taking on Katsunori Kikuno, a former champion in Japan. And, Tony, we wish you all the best of luck, man. I mean, you sound more fired up than I've heard anybody all week. I, you know what? This is it. It's just my confidence game has gotten up. I don't know what happened the last couple of years, but, you know, I, I drank confidence this morning, and, you know, I'm going to keep drinking it the rest of the week. Nice. Great. Can I get some of that Kool-Aid? Well, <laughs> Kool-Aid.
<laughs> All right, Tony, take care and thank you so much for joining us.